So just remember, the root is the three-letter basic building block. So any word consists of a root plus affixes that you add to this root, okay? Either prefixes, circumfixes, or suffixes. So all words sharing the same root will share a common meaning, but they will differ in the affixes. Sometimes the semantic relationship, however, between words sharing a common root may not be very obvious. But it's always there, you just need to go back in time. Do you remember when we were talking about the words Habara and Habara? What's Habara? Habara, it's to come. Okay, so in the past tense with Hua. So that's Habara. What's Habara? Anyone remember? Civilization. Civilization. Anyone remembers? Okay, so these two words, by the way, they share the common root of ha bod ra So the root of both consists of the three letters ha bod ra Okay? So anyone remembers what's the semantic relationship, i.e. the relationship in the meaning between the two words? Exactly. So, habara in modern standard Arabic, it indicates to come, but in classical Arabic, it didn't just indicate to come, okay? In classical Arabic, you will find, and that's very frequent, that you'll find that the semantic indication of the verb does not just apply one thing, but in many cases, you know, it may apply more than one thing. Katie? To come and be present forward. Uh, to come, yeah, to come and be influential. Okay, so it's not, not just being physically present, okay? So many persons may come but may not be influential. They may, their presence may not be even felt, okay? But habara in classical Arabic, it's to come and to be influential, not just being physically present. Unlike ja'a, for instance, ja'a is just to come in classical Arabic, but habara, it's to come and be influential. And as I told you in classical Arabic, there are no two words that are completely synonymous. There are no two synonyms in classical Arabic. Unlike in modern standard Arabic, Tabara and Ja'a may be used both with the same semantic indication just to come. But in classical Arabic, this is not the case. So Habara is to come and be influential, okay? So what about Habara? Can you try to guess the semantic relationship now between Habara and Habara? Habara is civilization, so what's this, what can be the semantic relationship between coming and, mean, and being influential, okay, and Habara civilization? Okay, any civilization, it's, okay, it's not just, okay, so you may have some parts of history, okay, some points in history in a specific place of the world, where there is this part of the world has no influence on other countries and on the history of the world. But when there is a civilization in any part of the world, it influences the lands that are around and it influences and changes history of mankind as well. So Habara, it's not, again, so it's very much related to not just being there in this specific part of the world, but being influential, okay? At, at the countries and, and or lands around it, as well as throughout history. The number of Arabic roots is huge. Theoretically, it's, okay, we have 28 letters, we have 28 possibilities for the first letter, 28 possibilities for the second, and 28 possibilities for the third letter, which are the 28 consonants that we have in Arabic. However, not all of these are always used, okay? So that's theoretically the maximum number of roots that, that you can have, but the actual number of roots, it varies with time. So some roots may have been used a thousand years ago, they, may, they are not used today, and some roots may be used, okay, hundreds of years from now that are not used today. So the number of roots is always changing. From each root, you can derive hundreds of words. So we have theoretically, that's the maximum number of roots that we can get in Arabic. 
Okay, the number, the, ac the actual number of routes that are used, it varies from time to time. And from each route, you can derive hundreds of words, whether verbs or nouns. And under the general umbrella of nouns, we'll have adjectives and adverbs as well. The origin of the meanings of the roots is almost always sensory or material, which is the case with Semitic languages in general. So, for instance, the word adl, okay, which has, uh, which currently uh, is used to indicate fairness or justice, you'll find that the root for it, which is the ayn, the lam root, it has nothing to do with the concept itself, the concept of fairness or justice, but it originally referred to something that Arabs used to put on top of the uh, camel to keep their balance, okay, so to keep them balanced in order not to be inclined, okay, on any side. So, and later on, this, the, uh, this thing that, okay, this root became uh, indicative or mainly just used to indicate fairness or justice. So, any, any questions so far? Okay, so again, the root, it's the three-letter basic building block of any Arabic word. All words sharing the same root will always share a common meaning. Sometimes the semantic relationship may not be very obvious, such as, as in this case, but it's always there. You always need to go back in time to understand the semantic relationship. So let's have, for instance, this root, the root kaf, te, be. Anyone remembers what's, what this root has to do with? Writing, yeah. Okay, so the root kaf, te, be, it has to do with writing. So by default, any word that will have this root, okay, will have to do with writing. From this root, you can derive up to 10 verb forms. Each can be conjugated in 34 ways. So you can have 34, uh, 340 verb words out of the root ke, fe, be. So for instance, these are among the 10 verb forms that you can have. Katabe, kattabe, katabe, aktabe, takatabe, istaktabe. Okay? All of these words, by the way, they are sharing the same root, which the same root which is the kaf ta ba. And these are all conjugated with huwa in the past. And each one of these can be conjugated in 34 ways in the three tenses that we have in Arabic, the past, present, and imperative. From the same root as well, kaf ta ba, you can derive a huge amount of nouns, including adjectives and, adver and adverbs. These are under the general umbrella of nouns. By putting the root in different patterns to get different meanings. So, among these words, for instance, uh, Katie, can you start reading the first one? Kitaba. Kitaba. This refers to writing. It's the verbal noun. Okay. Katib. Okay. That's writer or author. Kitab. Kitab. Book. Aisha. Maktub. Maktub. Maktub, okay. That's, uh, okay, it refers to letter and literally it's written, okay. Maktub, which is desk or office, literally it's the place or time of writing. Maktaba, it's the feminine of maktab, okay, and it's used to indicate library, but originally, again, and literally, it's the place or time of writing. Okay. Uh, okay, that's the old word for school. Mukataba. So, here is an example of what I was just saying. Mukataba, it's asking for one's freedom. Okay? So, here the semantic relationship is, is very hard to guess. How can asking for one's freedom, okay, be related or share the same root as all words that have to do with writing, okay? So, the semantic relationship with other words can be obvious. So, for instance, katab it's the writer, kitab it's, it's book, and it has to do with writing as well, letter, okay, place, uh, maktab, maktaba, place or time of writing, kutab, even kutab, the old word for school, okay, that's fine. But mukataba, 
The semantic relationship here may not be very obvious. Anyone can try to guess? It's color sign of freedom. Mm -hmm. to uh, no, actually, Mukataba, it, it had to do with slavery originally. So slaves, most of them were uh, illiterate. So whenever they wanted to ask for their freedom, they were uh, asking someone who used to write for uh, a fee to exchange letters with uh, with their masters in order to get pay them okay uh, an amount of money to get their freedom. So the process of exchanging letters that's what actually was called mukataba. Mukataba originally referred to exchanging letters. And after that, with time, the word mukataba, which is just ex exchanging letters, became associated semantically with the process of asking for one's freedom. So this is, again, one example where the semantic relationship may not be very obvious. It okay, may not be obvious at all, actually, that, uh, in this case, but it's always there, okay? It's just understanding uh, the history behind the word. Okay, and finally, um, kat kataba. kataba, that's typewriter, okay, uh, the old word for typewriter or typing machine. So, all of these words will be sharing the same root, kef, tatba, and they all share a common meaning which has to do with writing. Okay, any questions? Let's talk now about the pattern. Okay, so just remember what's the root? Sure. Yeah, the three letter basic building block of any word. All words sharing the same root will share a common meaning. Okay, what about the pattern? Okay, so always remember any word is a combination of root plus pattern. The pattern, as we mentioned earlier, is like the container okay, that you pour the liquid into. So if you pour water, for instance, in any of these liquids, it may have a different exterior shape, but it will essentially remain water. So that's what okay, we refer to as all words sharing the same root will be sharing a common meaning. They will, any, any water, okay, it will remain water essentially, regardless of the container. The container, it's like the pattern. It, it's what gives the external shape to the liquid. The pattern, it's like the container in which the root is poured or put. It consists of the short vowels and affixes, affixes, i.e. either prefixes before the word, suffixes after the word, or circumfixes either before or after or in the middle, added to the root. All words sharing a common pattern will share some common characteristics. These characteristics will depend actually on the pattern that is used. The patterns are weighed morphologically according to a morphological scale. This uh, procedure of weighing according to a morphological scale is by replacing the three letters of the root with fa, ayn, and lam letters. So the first letter of the root will be replaced with the fa, the second letter of the root will be replaced with the ayn letter, and the third letter of the root will be replaced with the lam letter. And then you add the short vowels and affixes. We'll, uh, we'll get quite a few examples about this procedure. So it's just worth noting here that this root itself, the fa ayn lam root, it has to do with doing or action. And most of the grammatical terms are derived from this root, such as fi'al, grammatically, it means verb, and literally it means action. So the word fi'al literally means action. Grammatically, it's, it means verb. Fa'il, literally, it's the doer. Grammatically, it's the subject, and the subject is the doer of the action. Maf'ul bihi, that's the object grammatically, and literally the done to or done with, i.e. the one that the action was done to or done with. So in grammar we have fi'al, verb, fa'il, subject, maf'ul bihi, object, 
Okay, and literally there is an action that the doer did it, okay, and this action has been done to or done with the object, okay. So this root fa i lam it has to do with doing or action. So let's have an example of a pattern. So the first pattern that we'll talk about is the pattern fa'i. Okay? So the pattern fa'i it indicates the doer, i.e. the subject of the action. So what what is the action? This is determined by the root. So let's say for instance that we have this root, the kaf, ta, ba root. This root, just remember it has to do with writing in that. We'd like to put it in the pattern fa'i. Okay, so fa'i here, this is our container. The kaf, ta, ba, this is our liquid. Okay, so we'd like to put the root kaf, ta, ba into the pattern fa'i. So how will we do that? Okay, exactly. So, uh, okay, but what's the first step, Katie? What's the first step? Okay. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned very okay, accurately the second step, but there is a first step. I know that, that you got it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's by replacing the fat I lem oh, with yes. the three letters of the root, okay? So, in this case, you replace the fat with kef, the ayin with ta, and the lam with ba, okay? So that's how you replace the fa ayin lam of the pattern with the three letters of the root. So the kef will be instead of the fa, the ta instead of the ayin, and the ba instead of the lam, and then you add any other thing, in this case the alif and the kasra will stay as they are, so it will be katib, okay? So just remember, the pattern fa'i indicates the doer of the action, okay? And the action here is writing, okay? So by putting the action of writing into the pattern fa'i, it will indicate the doer of that action, i.e. the writer or author, okay? So that's how the root combines with the pattern Okay, to form the noun of the doer in this case. This, is, this will be called ism al-fa'il or the noun of the doer. So the pattern fa'il will always indicate the doer of the action. What action? This is determined by the root. Okay, so did you all get this? Okay, so we have two players here. The root, it determines the action. The pattern, it determines a specific characteristic. In this case, it determines the doer of that action, okay? So the pattern, whenever you have a word following the pattern fa'il, it will always indicate the doer, okay? The doer of the action. What action? This is determined by the root, okay? So the root kaf ta ba, it has to do with writing. By putting it in the pattern fa'il, it will be Kati, okay, you replace the fa with the first letter of the root, the, which is the kaf, you replace the ayin with the second letter of the root, which is the ta, and you replace the lam with the third letter of the root, which is the ba, and you add any other things, in this case the long vowel alif and the short vowel kasra, so it will be katib, and that's literally the writer, okay? Let's move on to uh, Sumaira, can uh, you read the second one? Okay, Qafra Hamza, that's the root. And it will be Qari. Okay, so how did we form this word? Exactly. And second step? Yeah, you're adding the extra part, okay, which is the alif and the kasra. Okay, so the root qaf, ra, hamza, it has to do with reading. So qari, it will be the doer of the action of reading, i.e. the reader. Okay? 
Uh, let's move on to uh, uh, another question. Um, for the yeah, after the, okay. Um, what? Okay. Are yeah. The in in this case, uh, yeah. Okay. Just please note whenever you have the hamza written on any vowel. Okay. The hamza just remember it can be written on top of the alif, on top of the wow, on top or or below the alif, on top of the wow, and on top of the yeah. If it's written on top of the yeah, the two dots will be removed. But in all of these cases, and it can be written on its own as well, but in all of these cases, it will remain essentially a hamza. Okay? So regardless of the letter that it is written on, okay, on, it remains a hamza. So this is as if it's like a hamza. Okay? Just remember this, uh, as I told you in quiz one, this was one of my suggestions okay, for a new alphabet. Okay, that to, to just write the Hamza in all cases as just a Hamza, okay, it's not very helpful for students to see, the, or for learners of Arabic in general, to see the Hamza written, okay, on top of a vowel, okay, this is not uh, the best way, okay, so, uh, the reason it's written on a yeah, in this case, it's because of the Kasra before it, okay, okay, let's move on. There is, okay. So, how do we form this word again? Yeah. Uh, so you replace the half with the You replace the fat with the del, yeah. Um, the uh, ayn with the ra and, and the lam with the seen, exactly. And you add the alif and kasra as usual, so it will be theirs. This root, del, ra, seen, has to do with yeah. learning or studying. Okay, so there is, it will be the doer of the action, i.e. the learner or the studier, okay? Uh, next one, okay. Okay. Alim, okay. So again, same case, replace the fa with the first letter of the root, ayn, replace the ayn with the second letter of the root, which is the lam, and replace the lam with the, with the third letter of the root, which is the meme, so it will be alim, al the ayn lam mim root. It has to do with knowing. Okay, so alim literally and originally it meant knower. Okay, i.e. a person who knows. And after that, it has be it has uh, uh, acquired the semantic indication of scientist. Okay, i.e. scientist as a knower in his field. Okay. Uh, let's move on to uh, Ari. Next one. Shakir. Exactly. So replacing the fa with the first letter, ayn with the second letter, lam with the third letter. So it will be Shakir. This root, shin kathra, it has to do with thanking. So Shakir will be the one who thanks or the thanker. Okay. And many, last one, you'll tell us what's missing. Wa'id, that's it. Okay, so the root wa'u, ayn, dal, it has to do with promising. Okay, so wa'id will be the promiser. Okay, and wa'id, okay, it's formed again by replacing the fa with the first letter of the root, the wa'u, the ayn with the second letter of the root, which is the ayn in this case, the lam with the third letter of the root, which is the dal, and add the alif and the kas and the kasra, so it will be wa'id. Any questions about this pattern? Okay, let's move on to another pattern, the pattern maf'ul. Okay, do you remember when we were talking about the grammatical terms? Okay, the grammar term fa'il, okay, it indicated the subject, okay, and the pattern fa'il, it indicated the door, okay. So here we have the maf'ul bihi, which indicated the object. The maf'ul pattern will also indicate the object of the action, i.e. the person or the object that the action was done to or done with, okay? So, uh, the pattern or the siha of maf'ul, it indicates the, the object or the one or the thing that was, that the action was done to or done with, okay? So, here is our root, kaf, ta, but 
Again, this route it has to do with writing. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to Layla. Can you read this one? Yeah. Mac, Mac Mac exactly. How did you form this route? Um, uh, this word, route sorry. Is, uh, <coughs> K K K K T B. Okay. <coughs> yeah. So. And, uh, because it's in, in Macool, you just add the name. Exactly. So the first step is to replace. The, yeah. Replace the. The, yeah, the fa with the first letter of the root, which is the cap. Yeah, and then we just use the, the, the ayin with the second letter of the root, the ta, and, and the lam with the third letter of the root, which is the ba. Yeah. Okay, and then second step. And the second, uh, I just put the ta instead of ayin. Okay. And okay, so, okay, so let me say that the first step. Uh, I'll get to you in a second. Okay, the first step is to replace the fa with the first letter of the okay, root. I will put the ka ta ba yeah. to uh, fa Yeah, instead of the fa ayin yeah. then. Okay, and second step? Um. You add all the other things, okay? So the meme with the fatha, the sukun, okay, on, the, yeah, the sukun yeah. on the first letter of the root, and the wal, okay, before the last letter of the root. Okay, so again, first step, replacing the fa with the kaf, the ayin with the ta, the lam with the ba. Second, you add all the extra things, okay, the meme, the fatha, the sukun, and the wa. Okay, Katie? When I look at this, I see the changes made is the meme with the fatha and the wa added and the kasra um, on the second letter, but it's not on the kaf. Is there a reason uh, that it's not in the cap? Okay. Not uh, you, you're talking about the sukun? Yeah. So uh, yeah, no, uh, I, I just missed writing it here. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's fine. So, um, yeah, it, it will be <laughs> maktub. So, maktub, it will mean? Yeah, the written. Okay. So, maktub, it will indicate the, the object of the action. Mm -hmm. What this action is, okay, is that's determined by the root. Okay. So, it will be the action of writing, okay, and maktub will be the written. So, to continue with this, the, you add one letter and then you trade the next letter, it just seems so convoluted, especially as a new learner of the language. When I look at this, all I want to do is add a mean with a fatha, a wow, and a sukun. Is it not more simple to just look at it and see that I look at the pattern and affect the root with it? Once, okay, uh, once you're used to it, okay, you will not need yeah, to, to follow any steps, you will just get it, okay, yeah. w automatically, okay, so, yeah, and that applies to all patterns, okay, so it's just, uh, I'm just telling you, okay, the, the steps in detail, mm -hmm. but once you get used to it, okay, you will just get it automatically, you will not need to worry about following the steps. Sorry, and I think mm -hmm. it's the way you just say, like, Mac-O, with mac two, like, E, exactly the the sound yeah or yeah they'll always have the same morphological weight this is what what you're talking about is called morphological weight so yeah it will be in this case for instance I'll, I'll get to you quick in a second okay in this case fa'il will be katib qari daris alim shakir so all of them will have the same morphological weight okay the same number of syllables and uh, they'll have the same vowel okay exactly where it's located they they not have the okay the rhyming at the end but they will be following the same morphological weight same for this one will be maktub maqru madrus all will have the same morphological weight as maf'ul okay are those still nouns sorry would those still function as nouns uh, yeah these are still nouns yeah okay so first one it's maktub Okay, so maktub, it's the pattern maf'ul, so it's the object, the, it's called ism maf'ul, or the noun of the object, okay, and what's uh, the action, it's the action of writing, so it will be the object of the action of writing, <coughs> i.e. the written, okay, is, that, is it clear this part, okay, Malika, next one, maqru, okay, maqru, okay, how do we do for this word? First, we put the 
the hamza to the okay. form of the ta'ala? Yeah, exactly. So we replace the fa with the qaf, the ayn with the ra, and the lam with the hamza. Exactly. And then turn it to the form of the uh, Yeah, so you basically add the meme with the fatha, the sukun, and the wal. So it will be makro. And makro, it's the red, i.e. the thing that is being read. It's the op uh, it's the object of the action of reading. Okay. Uh, next one, Matilda. Uh, it's madrus. Madrus, exactly. So again, the how we formed it by replacing the fa with the first letter of the root, which is the den, the ayn with the second letter of the root, which is the ra, and the lam with the third letter of the root, which is the sin. And then you add the mim, the fatha, the sukun, and the wa, so it will be madrus and this root, it has to do with studying. studying or learning. So it will be, madrus will be the learned or the studied, i.e. the material that is learned or studied. It will be the, the object of the action. Okay. And next one. Ma'alum, exactly. So again, replacing the fa with the ayn, the ayn with the second letter, which is the lam, and the lam with the third letter, which is the meme. So it will be, and adding the, all the extra stuff, so it will be ma'loom. And this root, ayn lam mean it has to do with? Knowing, yeah. So ma'loom will be the thing that is known, i.e. the object of the action of knowing. Okay. Uh, next one, Munira. Mashkur. Mashkur, okay. Mashkur. Again, how did we how did we inform this word? Uh, first, we put the uh, in, in the sifa of the and then we add the mean and the wa. Yeah. So first, you replace the fa lam with the three letters of the root respectively, and then you add the extras, the mean with the fatha, the uh, sukun, and the wa. So it will be mashkur, and the root shin kafra. It has to do with Thanking, so mashkur it will be the person who is thanked, i.e. the object of the action of thanking. Okay, and uh, Bri, yeah. you will do uh, this one. Majruh. Majruh, that's it. Okay, so majruh, again you will replace the fa, ayn, lam with the jim, ra, and ha respectively. Okay, and then add the mim with the fatha, the sukun, and the wa. And Jara, the root jim ra ha, it has to do with hurting. <coughs> so majruh will be the hurt. I have a question. So how do you know to leave the meme alone? Because that's like a constant. Like it's always just the middle consonants. Like you leave out the last. Like. Uh, do you no, know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I, I get your point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, what will be replaced are the fa, ayn, and lam letters Why? only. Why okay. those ones and not the? Yeah, because as we mentioned. Uh, when we are using the morphological scheme, we are replacing the three letters of the root with fa, ayn, lam. So in this case, we'll be doing the reverse. Okay, we'll be replacing the fa, ayn, lam with the three letters of the root. Okay, so you can either, okay, do you can do do it both ways. So you can either replace the fa, ayn, lam with the three letters of the root to get the word. Or you can be, if you have this word, and you're asked to weigh it according to the morphological scale. So in this case, you will replace the three letters of the root with the fa, ayn, lam, and add the extras to get the morphological weight of this word. Okay. So all of these words, okay, they will be having the same pattern and the same morphological weight. Okay, which is maf'ul. A morphological weight, it's like Okay, weighing the word morphologically, okay, so it's uh, it's basically replacing the three letters of the root with fa, ayn, and lam respectively, okay, to get what is called our morphological weight, okay, which is maf'ul in these cases. Okay. Uh, okay, do you have any questions about the pattern maf'ul? Okay, let's move on to last one. Uh, we'll be... Uh, this is our last pattern that we will have today. <coughs> the pattern maf'al or suyrat maf'al. The pattern maf'al indicates the place or time of doing an action. Okay? 
So, mafal, whenever you have a word following the pattern mafal, okay, it will indicate either the place of the action or the time of the action. Okay, let's go to Laszlo, please read. Yeah, maktab, and the family will be maktaba. Okay, so maktab and maktaba both are following the pattern mafal. The root for both is kaf ta. But do you remember this root it has to do with <coughs> writing? Okay. So maktab, how do we form this one? That's one? Uh, just you place fa ayin la with Exactly. You replace the fa with the first letter of the root, which is the kaf, the ayin with the second letter of the root, which is the ta, and the lam with the third letter of the root, which is the ba, and then. And I'll keep the sukhim, and I'll keep the fatha. Exactly. And you add the meme with a fatha at the beginning. Okay, so it will be maktab, okay, that's the pattern maf'al, okay. By adding the ta' marhuta, okay, you're making this word feminine, exactly. So maktab and ma so maktab it, it's uh, follow, following the pattern maf'al, and the morphological weight as well is maf'al, okay. Maktaba, it's following the pattern maf'al, but if we weigh this word morphologically, the morphological weight will be. Yeah, you will add the that marbuta to the morphological weight as well. Okay, so the morphological weight of maktaba is mafala. Okay, this is the masculine singular uh, of, uh, i.e., the place of writing, and this is the feminine singular of the place of writing still. So, uh, maktab and maktaba both indicate the place of writing. Maktab has been uh, okay, used recently to indicate either office or desk in modern standard Arabic. Maktaba in uh, in modern standard Arabic and in uh, okay since hundreds of, hundreds of years it has indicated the word uh, to the the meaning of library. Okay, so uh, again a question here: library should it be called the place of writing or more logically the place of reading? Okay, so where is the logic here of calling a library, okay, the place of writing rather than the place of reading? Okay, but I mean, why why did we use the root kataba essentially? Okay. Eventually, someone had to write the books before you could read them, and that's what we did. That's it. That's exactly the case. Okay, so uh, the libraries they were originally used. Okay, just try always. To go back in time, okay, to the the pre-machine era, okay. So we didn't have machines to write books, okay. So Arabs they uh, usually ha uh, were in order to let's say have a thousand copies of one book. So we'll have let's say first of all ten books written, and then we'll have ten persons who will read the ten books to hundreds of writers who will be writing the books handwritten. So, and this process took place in the library. So the library, it was more importantly used for writing books, okay, uh, rather than for reading them, okay, because the writing books was more considered more important, okay. Uh, so that's why the library, okay, is, or maktaba, it's the place of writing, okay. Uh, let's move on to Brandon, can you read this word? Makra'a. Okay, so makra'a, again, uh, we, how do we form this word? We replace the fa with the first letter of the root, which is the qaf, the ayn with the second letter of the root, which is the ra, and the lam with the third letter of the root, which is the hamza, okay? So it will be makra' and the ta marbuta. What's the, the indication of the ta marbuta? Yeah, the feminine gender. So by putting it in, by adding the ta marbuta, you're putting it in the feminine gender. So makra'a, uh, it's following the pattern maf'al, which indicates the noun of place or noun of time. Okay, ism makan or ism zaman. And uh, if we weigh this word morphologically, it will be. Maf'ala, yeah, exactly. So it will be maf'ala. Okay, so how do we get the morphological weight? Let's re remember. 
Yeah, the, the opposite process, okay, replacing the first letter of the root with the fa, the second letter of the root with the ayn, the third letter of the root with the lam, and then add all the extras, so it will be ma, and then fa'ala, okay, and you will add the marbuta, ma fa'ala, okay. Uh, so, maqra'a, this root has to do with reading. Maqra'a, it will be either the time or place of reading. So, this pattern, the pattern maf'al, it indicates either the time of the action or the place of the action. Okay? Well, next one. Madrasa. okay. So, again, how did we form this word? Yeah. Exactly, replacing the fat with the del, the ayn with the ra, the lam with the seen, okay, and then adding the extras, okay, it will be madras at first, but it's used in the feminine, so it will be madrasa, okay. Uh, the root del, ra, seen it has to do with studying or learning, so madrasa will be literally the place of learning or the place of studying, i.e., school, okay. Next one. Ma'lam. Ma'lam, exactly. So again, by replacing the fa with the ayn, the ayn with the lam, and the lam with the meme, okay, and then adding the extras, so it will be ma'lam. So this root, it has to do with ayn, lam, meme, it has to do with knowing, exactly. So any guesses? So ma'lam is used recent, has been used recently to indicate sight or attraction. Okay. By the way, by, uh, when I use the term recently, i.e. in, let's say, the last century, okay, uh, or a little bit more sometimes, so ma'alam, it's the sight or attraction. So what's the semantic relationship here between sight or attraction and the place of known? Any guesses? This is not a very difficult one to get. Yeah, exactly. By going to a site or attraction, you're acquiring new knowledge, okay? You're getting new information, okay? So that's why site or attraction has been called ma'lam, literally the place of knowing, okay? Next one. Um, Ma'am. Ma'am, okay? So this root, again, first of all, forming this word by replacing the, the fa with the first letter of the root, the ayn with the second letter of the root, and the lam with the third letter of the root, pa, ayn, meme respectively, and then adding the extras, okay? Uh, this root, it has, pa, ayn, meme, it has to do with eating, okay? So, matam will be literally the place of eating, okay? Uh, shukran, Michel. And finally, aya, can you tell us what's missing? Yeah, it will be mashrab, exactly. The root sheen ra ba, it has to do with drinking. So mashrab, it will be the place of drinking. Okay. Uh, any guesses? Uh, sorry, any questions about this slide? Okay. Uh, I'll need 10 volunteers, please. Okay. First of all, let me tell you what you will do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here we have all of these words Sharib, Amil, Arif, Qarit, Falib. All of these are following the pattern <coughs> Fa'il, exactly. And all of these words Manqul, Maf'ul, Mabsuq, Manshur, Mashur, all of them are following the pattern Maf'ul. Okay? So here you have the pattern and we need the root. Okay, so I need 10 volunteers to write the rules. Okay, please come. Okay, uh, yeah, just, just choose anyone. Okay. Uh, uh, the tallest two, please, you, okay, please go to share it and pass it on.
Okay, one more volunteer. We need one more volunteer. Uh, one more. We need just one more. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, this. This. Okay. Okay. Uh, someone just did. Okay. Someone did the the wrong one. Okay. Clog it. Who did clog it? Okay. So can I can I have one more volunteer? Okay, and all volunteers, please write on the, write your bonus on the attendance sheet. Okay. Okay. Let's go over the first one. Share it. Okay. Who did share it? Okay. Uh, the root is Shin Ra Be. Okay, is that correct? Okay, so the first one is correct. Okay, Aamil, who did Aamil? Okay, Aim Mim Lem, is that correct? Okay, Aarif, who did it? Okay, so Aim Ra Fa, is that correct? Okay, Qari, Qaf Ra Hamza, is that correct? Okay, and Falib, Fa. Lem, okay. Lem, Qaf, is that right? Yes. Okay, let's move on to the pattern Maf'ul. Okay, uh, who did Manqul? Okay, okay, Nun, Qaf, Lem, is that right? Okay, second one, who did Maf'ul? Okay, Sumaira, Fa, Ay, Lem, is that right? Okay, Mabsu, okay, Ba, Sin, Qa, is that right? Okay. Manshur, Nun, Shin, Ra, is that correct? Okay, yes. Mm? <laughs> okay, so uh, first of all, who did Manshur? Okay, uh, please, uh, all of you who volunteered, please mark your bonus, uh, just write bonus, and uh, the reason is volunteering. Okay, uh, Manshur, uh, Shin, what, what's this letter? Ha? Okay, we're <laughs> Okay, so. Okay, so Sheen, Ha, Ra, okay, is that correct? Okay, so uh, more for your bonuses. Okay, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we'll be continuing this PowerPoint, we'll be continuing the root and pattern. Uh, we'll be having group activities tomorrow as well about the root and pattern, so please be prepared. The group activities will be for bonus, okay? So please, uh, if you uh, if you feel comfortable with certain groups, try to arrange your groups to, okay, together before class. Uh, or we'll be having individual activities as well as group activities, okay? Uh, where is the attendance sheet? Okay, that it was submitted today. Yeah,